Hi, Engineer Lair here. This is part 2 ng Engineering Mechanics Repressure Set. So, okay, this is another situational problem for questions 5, 6, and 7. I have here a rod na nakapatong sa isang uh, parang ito. Okay, naka-incline yung rod ko and it's supported at two points, point A and B. Walang given na uh, coefficient of friction. So, we, we don't assume na rough yung surface. Ang gagawin natin is smooth siya as, as seen by this reaction forces. Okay, walang frictional forces. So, ano ang reason bakit hindi nagsaslide yung, cable, yung rod natin due to its own weight na 420 pounds? It's because nakatali siya ng cable na to. So, we have this cable and of course, the force in the cable is uh, T or tension. For the first one, for the first question, we are asked, ano yung tension doon sa cable? So, ang gagawin ko, mag-moment ako, so magsasummation ako ng moments at point A. So, for equilibrium, this must be equal to zero. And I will take clockwise mo uh, counterclockwise moments as positive. So, pag kinuha ko kasi yung pre-body diagram ng rod ko, Ito yung mga forces, no? R sub A, and then I have a tension here, T, and yung normal force. Si normal force is may kita mo, naka-incline siya dahil dun siya sa tip mismo netong support natin, netong uh, rigid object na to. And since ang incline dito ay 45 degrees, we know that the angle of inclination of the normal force must be also 45 degrees. And Pwede kong palitan yan ng components niya. So, I can put here N cosine of 45 degrees at saka yung upward component niya na N sine 45 degrees. So, ito yung pre-body diagram ng rod natin. At huwag kakalimutan, meron tayong weight. Weight niya which is 420 pounds. Okay. So, dito ang point A. Summation of moment at point A will yield the following. Una si T. Okay, T. Ang moment arm niya or ang kanyang uh, perpendicular distance ng line of action papunta kay point A. So, ito yon Perpendicular distance. That is 2 feet. Okay, at huwag kalimutan counterclockwise positive ako. So, since pag dito si A, pag pinaikot ko si T kay A, that will be clockwise, dapat negative to. Okay, moving on yung K. Pag sinimplify natin yan, what we will get is negative 2T okay, minus ito, 6 times 420. And mapapansin mo, cosine 45 and sine 45 is actually equal. Pareha silang Para sila ng value. So, pwede kong ilagay dito, plus 2 times 8 times n, either cosine or sine. So, let's say cosine 45. Dahil parehas naman yung cosine at sine. Ginawa ko na lang twice nun. Okay. Now, if I sum up the forces horizontal and equate it to 0, okay, Ano lang ba ang may horizontal component? Ang meron lang is yung tension must be equal doon sa horizontal component ng normal force sa taas. So, this must be equal to N cosine 45 degrees. Ito yung makuha kong equation and from summation of moments, isubstitute ko to. I will get, Zero. isa na lang yung inahanap, T na lang. So, pwede kang mag-algebra or pwede kang mag-calculator. And solving for T gives us T is equal to 180 pounds. So, for question number 5, the answer is 180 pounds. For number 6, determine the normal force above the rod. So, dahil may T ka na, from, from this equation, madali, madali mo na lang masolve yung N. So, 180 pounds 
is equal to n cosine of 45. n is therefore equal to 254.56 pounds. So, yan na kaagad yung answer natin for question uh, number 6. Last question for, for this situation. Determine the reaction at the bottom of the rod. Reaction at the bottom of the rod. Again, T is 180 pounds. N is 254.56 pounds. Okay. So, summation of forces Y must be equal to zero for equilibrium. Ang pre-body diagram natin ay ito. So, pag tinigam mo yung pre-body diagram, ano lang may yung mga Y components? Siyempre, si R sub A minus yung downward na weight niya na 420 pounds plus N sin 45. At alam natin ang N is 254.56 pounds okay, times sin 45. Dapat yan, pag sinum up mo, equal to zero. Therefore, R sub A, okay, using your calculator, you can solve it like this. This is 240 pounds. So, ito ang answer natin para doon sa reaction sa baba. It's 240 pounds. Next problem tayo. Tapos na natin yan. So, Situation 3, answer the following terms in engineering mechanics. Napakadali, puro terms lang. So, 7, 8, uh, 8, 9, and 10 will be about terms. First question, what is the branch of engineering mechanics which refers to the study of stationary rigid bodies? Stationary rigid uh, bodies. So, since stationary siya, Okay? Kasi, alam natin, di ba, ang mechanics is the study of rigid bodies. At pwede mo hatiin yan sa dalawa. Pag sinabing stationary, the velocity is zero. This is uh, stationary. And this is statics. Pag velocity mo naman is a constant, or not equal to zero, ito yung dynamic to, or moving. Of course, we call it dynamics. So, again, kung hinahanap mo is yung stationary na rigid body, of course, we are referring doon sa part ng mechanics na statics. What refers to the force that holds part of the rigid body together part of the rigid body together okay so kung if i have a rigid body let's say meron na kong plate ganyan at nag-apply ako ng force forces p okay i identify natin yung force na p we call this an external force Okay? External forces yan. Now, if I cut my body in in an inclined position like this, so hina, hiniwa ko siya, may expose ko yung uh, tinatawag nating internal forces. So, I have a normal force and a shear force. So, ito yung P. And this is, is related doon sa external force. So, it, it follows yung equilibrium. Yung pinagkatan ko, ma-expose -e yung internal forces na tinatawag. We call this the internal forces. Pag wala yung internal forces na yan, okay, hindi magiging isang object to, maghihiwalay siya. So that's why ang answer dito, yung forces that holds parts of the rigid body together in engineering mechanics, we call them the internal forces forces or ito, letter C. Two forces acting on a particle may be replaced by a single force 
called the resultant, which can be obtained by drawing diagonals of parallelogram, which has the sides equal to the given force. This statement is known as, obviously, it's known as the parallelogram law. So, kapag meron kang dalawang vectors, A and B, para makuha mo yung resultant nila, gagawa ka ng parallelogram with the sides A and B. So, ang parallelogram. And then, kukunin mo yung diagonal ng pal parallelogram mo. Yun yung resultant. So, ito yung resultant mo. That is the parallelogram law. So, the answer is uh, the par parallelogram law. So, ano ba yung... Iba pa dito. We have Barignon's Theorem, Papos Propositions, or I think this is the Papos Theorems for volume and principles of transmissibility. So, Papos, uh, the Papos Theorems na naaalala ko, it has something to do with the volumes. No, kung wari, I have here a triangle, tapos irorotate mo siya dito sa axis, makakabuo yan ng shape na parang ganito, no? May triangular section. Pero, parang ganito yung magiging shape niya. Okay? So, yung magiging volume niyan daw, ayon kay Papus, is kunin mo yung centroid ng triangle, yun ang paikutin mo kay axis. So, this is the radius. Yung circumference nito, o so 2 pi r, ang circumference, i-multiply mo nung area nung triangle. So, 2 pi times radius, radius nung center, centroid nung triangle kay axis, multiply mo ng area. Ito yung magiging volume. Okay? Ito yung magiging volume nung, nung solid of revolution, kung tawagin. Solid of revolution. Yun, kaya, yun yung naalala ko kay Papus. And yung ibang terms naman, we have principle of transmissibility and mechanics. Okay? Para may object ako dito, pinush ko dito sa top with 10 newtons. This is equivalent. Okay? Sa same object. So, eto pinush ko. It's equivalent sa same object na pinul ko sa side na to ng 10 newtons. Okay? Dito is a push. Ito ay pull. Equivalent sila in mechanics because of the principle of transmissibility. Transmissibility, ito yun, no? Kung wari may object ka, meron akong force P, and pwede ko i-transfer yung force P doon sa line of action niya. So, since ito yung line of action niya, pwede ko actually ilagay dito yung same force P and it will still have the same effect. Yun yung transmissibility sa uh, mechanics. Okay, letter D naman, Barignon's Theorem. Ano yung Barignon's Theorem? Uh, Barignon's Theorem states that the sum of the whole is equal to the sum of the parts. Ginagamit natin to sa summation of moments and that is yung moment nung buong object is equal to the summation of moments nung maliliit na parts niya. Kaya pwede natin gawin yung ano, yung kunin yung moment using the components. ba? Diba? Uh, kung wari, meron kang point dito, meron akong force dito P, yung moment niya, Okay, yung moment at point A ni P is equal doon sa summation ng moment ng components. Px, uh, y bar plus Py, x bar. Ito yung components. So, yan yung parts ng vector or ng force P natin. Yan yung Barignon's theorem. So, yan yung choices kung nakikita mo, no? So that's it for for this set. Thank you again for listening. Uh, bukas marami pa tayong gagawin. Like mo yung video kung ayos. Pag hindi, pag mo i-dislike, leave ka ng comment kung bakit. Ha? Sige na, subscribe.